Okay, so we are working our way into um, a new unit in algebra, which is one of the most important units for basically any type of algebra math that you are going to do after this year. You will use this in geometry and in algebra 2 and every other type of math ever forever. Okay, so make sure that you, um, if you tend to zone out or think things are just going to last for a minute, this is not one of them, so stick with me. All right, so today we're going to talk about factoring GCF, and we've got um, four different lessons on this. So this first part is just on GCF, which hopefully you remember. GCF is greatest common factor, and you probably need to label that in your notes. So what is factoring, first of all? Because you're going to see questions that say, you need to factor this, and you may not know what that means. So to factor is to unmultiply. Um, so for instance, to multiply is to say 2 times 5 equals 10. And to factor is to say they give you 10 as the starting problem, and you say 10 equals, and then you would give an answer, 2 times 5. All right, that's what factoring does. So it's going the other way. Um, another way to think about factoring is to think about it as undistributing. So remember in um, algebra, we distribute when we multiply. So for instance, we've done this, right? Distributive is to multiply, and when we multiply, this would give me 15x squared minus, and then I'm going to do 3x times this negative 2, so minus 6x, um, and that would be my final answer. And so today, they're going to give me the answer and say, what was this problem in the beginning? Uh, so let's look at a few simple examples, and then we'll kind of start to look at a few more complex things. So um, simply, our job, one thing I will tell you that I found is very helpful for people if, is if they work literally work these problems upside down. So we're asking ourselves, what had to multiply out here times something on the inside to give me 36 plus 9x? And when we factor, this number on the outside is going to be our GCF. So we think about what would have multiplied to these two things that would have created a 36 and also a 9? And that number is 9, right? You can multiply 9 by something to get 36 and also 9 by something to get 9x. So then you're asking yourself, well, what is it that I'm multiplying uh, 9 by to get those things? So you're thinking about distributive. 9 times what would have given me 36? The answer there is 4. Then you ask yourself, 9 times what would have given me 9x? Well, that would have been x. And we put a plus sign in there because we need that to work back out. Um, to give me two terms. So one thing that I will tell you also before we do any more examples is that you should always, 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 always do a mental check of your answer. I'm not saying you have to write out all the steps again, but you need to look at this and mentally distribute that in your head to see that it works. 9 times 4 does give me 36. 9 times x gives me plus 9x. All right? So now we're going to do the same thing on this next one. I'm asking myself, what could have multiplied to create a 5x and a 3x squared? So I'm asking myself, what could multiply to create both of those? Well, I think an x could multiply to create both of those because I see an x in both of those. x is the GCF. So then I'm asking myself, x times what would have given me 5x? That's 5 x times what would have given me 3x squared? Well, x times 3 and another x, because if I don't put another x there, I'm not going to get the x squared. And then this is just a plus sign, because that's what's going to create that um, those two terms in the middle. And then you're going to go back and do that mental... So this is your answer that I'm circling in green. You're going to go back and do that mental check again. x times 5, that's 5x. x times 3x, that's 3x squared. All right, let's try one more. So this last one, um, what could I have multiplied that would have created a 15 and a 5? All right, so hopefully you're thinking 5. And then I'm going to do this distributive part kind of in my head. 5 times what would have given me 15x? That's 3x. Now the problem is, and the reason I've shown you this one, a lot of people stop right here because they 
they then they think, well, there's not anything to do that five back there. But you do have to ask yourself, five times what? And let me rewind. Let's say you stopped here, which is wrong, by the way. Don't stop there. Let's say that you stopped there. When you distribute and check your answer, all you're getting is 15x. You're not getting that minus 5 in the end. So we've got to put something there so that when I multiply, I can get minus 5. So ask yourself, 5 times what will give me this negative 5 right here? The answer is negative 1. Now, when you go back to distribute and check your answer, um, that is what you have right there. All right, so let's do a few more that are just, now that you've got the concept, that are kind of a little trickier for as far as the algebra goes. So on this first one, um, what I want you to see is that this is, the numbers part is easy, right? Um, 14 and 7, those both have a 7 that you can could have multiplied to create those. Um, because this starts with a negative, when you decide your front number, you need to put a negative with it. X squared and X, we've kind of already talked about that. Um, there's an X in each of those, so there must have been an X on the outside distributing that creates that. So now you're just going to ask yourself, um, and you might want to pause this and try that one on your own for a minute. So when you do that, you should get 2X here and minus 1 there. And so you're, you'll think about, like, just check that mentally, right? Negative 7, that's going to give you the 14, negative 14X squared. This one's going to give you positive 7x. Um, so let's try this next one. And I almost want to do this one wrong for a second. Um, and then I'm going to show you like the shorter way to do that or the, the easier way maybe to get the answer. So let's say with 16 and 48, you don't know what the biggest, the greatest g, right? Greatest common factor is. So let's say all you know is 4. So you take out a 4. Um, and if you look at the exponents, like we maybe you just take out an x to begin with. So if you go back to distribute that, that's going to give you 4x to the third here, and then minus 12x squared. Okay, it's not that this is wrong. It's just not completely factored, which is going to be an issue. Um, and the reason I know that it's not completely factored is because these things on the inside still have something in common, right? There's something in common between a 4 and a 12. There's something in common between an x to the third and an x squared. And they should not have anything in common anymore on the inside, right? 2x minus 1, those don't have anything in common. If we look back at the previous examples, what's in parentheses has nothing left in common, so what, when that happens, it means you haven't taken out the greatest common factor, so you need to go back to the beginning. The greatest common factor between 16 and 48 is actually 16. And then x to the fourth and x to the third, if you think about all the x's that you could have distributed to create that, it's actually x to the third. All right? And eventually you're going to see a pattern with that when you practice enough of these. Now when you multiply, you're going to get x here when you think about your distributive property. And 16 times what gives me negative 48x to the third? That's negative 3. Now you can notice that even though distributive worked on the first one, um, there's nothing left in common on the inside anymore, which means you're good to go. All right, this last example is just to show you about exponents. Um, so let's, let me zoom in kind of on it. This one is weird, I think, and tricks people a lot because you don't have any numbers, but think about just the exponents themselves. Um, what do we have in common between an x and an x squared? And the most that they have in common is just 1x. All right, then you're going to ask yourself, what does y to the fourth and y to the third have in common? And the answer to that is y to the third. Now, if you haven't already noticed, that's the smallest exponent for each of those that exists, like, in their um, spot. All right, so now I'm going to go back and distribute x, sorry, yeah, xy to the third times what would have given me xy to the fourth. So basically, what does this not have that it will need to be that in the end? And that's 1y. All right, you can put y to the first if that helps you to count. Um, then you're going to ask yourself, and i got to erase some of that. 
so you can see it. All right, then you've got to ask yourself the same question. x y to the third times what is going to give me x squared y to the third? Well, this time I need an x, right? I already have the y to the third, but it's missing the x part when I think about distributing to create that. All right, so there's your final answer on that one. And again, notice that what's on the inside has nothing left in common. Okay, so now we're on to our second phase of factoring, which is factoring trinomials. So let's remember a few things before we dive into how to factor trinomials. So to factor, um, remember, is to unmultiply. So that's what we're doing is we're unmultiplying. And remember, to unmultiply, another way to think about that is kind of to think about it like dividing. Um, so you are going to use that concept of, di of division sum. Um, Trinomials have three terms. So that's how you're going to recognize that this is the type of problem you're doing today. And then um, let's review what a multiplication problem looks like so that you remember how we go the other way. So remember, when you multiply with two sets of parentheses like this, um, there's two things that are multiplying. You've got an x that's going to distribute to the other set of parentheses. That's going to give you x squared plus 5x. You've also got this negative 8 that's going to distribute here. So that's going to give you minus 8x minus 40. Then when we um, simplify that, remember there's some like terms right here that can combine. And so my final answer is going to be x squared minus 3x because 5, positive 5, and negative 8 is negative 3 minus 40. All right, that's how we multiply those. So I want to show you some patterns. Remember, we're factoring, so we're going to go backwards in this process. And there is a way for us to specifically go backwards. Um, right now, we're just going to kind of work backwards through this. So um, I want you to notice a few patterns between the multiplication, the product, this is the product, and the factors themselves. And this will make sense as far as where these numbers are coming from. Um, notice that negative 40, there's a relationship between negative 8 and positive 5 and negative 40, and that's that those two numbers multiply to give you negative 40, right? Um, this is what they multiply to give you. Notice also that if you take negative 8 plus 5, they will add to give you negative 3. All right, so those are kind of some shortcuts as far as working that out. This ties back to what we did, um, we've seen this before, where we do these little riddles, right? And we're asking ourselves, I need two numbers that multiply and add to give me something, okay? So in this instance, it would be they multiply to give me negative 40, they add to give me negative 3, and then when we come up with those two numbers, negative 8 and positive 5, notice that those are the numbers that create my factors, if you need to pause and re-listen to that explanation one more time, please do so before you go to the examples because that's what I'm about to do is use that to solve these next few questions. Okay, so trinomials that are in standard form. And so standard form, remember my quadratic standard form. Um, that is x squared plus bx plus c all follow this pattern. Um, these technically have an A in front of them, but notice on all of these examples that we're doing right here, um, they don't have a number in the front. We're going to talk about that later. Okay, so remember, it's the last number that multiplies and the middle number adds on all of these. So I'm going to set up my problem. I need two numbers that multiply to give me 10 and they add to give me 7. So now you've got to think about those for a minute, and that just takes practice. Um, so if I think about that, I think 5 and 2 will work. So now my answer as my factors are x plus 5 and x plus 2. Now, I do tell you down here at the bottom, you need to do a mental check of all of these, and you always should when you factor, do a mental check to make sure that what you're doing works. So when I say mental check, 
the first thing I'm going to do, and if I could show you this in class, I would. Um, I'm going to multiply these two things together. X times X gives me X squared. All right, that checks off because X squared was in my problem. All right, then I'm going to say 2 times 5. So I'm checking the first and the last just to make sure they work. 2 times 5 is 10. So that gives me the last part. To do the middle part, I just multiply these two things kind of in my head. So 5X, and this is 5X, this is 2X. That gives me the 7X that's in the middle, which means I know that my answer is correct. Um, the quickest way to check, now you should do mentally checking all of those things, but you should always multiply the first and the last to at least make sure those match up. That will catch at least half of your errors. All right, so let's do another one. Um, same pattern, same idea. Multiply, add. So I need two numbers that multiply to give me negative 25, and they add to give me negative 24. Now, if they're multiplying to give me a negative number, I know that one of that one of my numbers needs to be negative and one needs to be positive, because um, that's the only way to multiply two numbers and then give you a negative answer. So I need a positive and a negative number. And sometimes you, you might get stuck, like 25, you might be thinking, um, that's 5 times 5, and I'm not ever going to get negative 24. That's not going to happen. So one thing that you can do is make a little chart for yourself. So like you can do 1 times 25, 2 doesn't work, 3 doesn't work, 4 doesn't work, 5 works, 5 times 5, and you can just kind of count up and make a list for yourself. So this is, this is actually some combination of 1 and 25 here, and... I need it to be negative 24, so I think that's going to be positive 1 and negative 25, which is going to make my answers x plus 1, x minus 25. And again, we're going to check that. So I'm going to do um, first times first, that's x squared. Last times last, that's negative 25. And then check the middle, positive 1, negative 25. That does give me negative 24 when I combine those like terms. All right, last example right here. So set it up again. Multiply, add. Six and five are some of the trickiest questions that they um, you will come across. They always trick people with the signs. So I need two numbers that multiply to give me six and add to give me negative five. Okay, if they multiply to give me positive six, that either means that my answers need to be both positive or both negative, negative one times negative six, negative two times negative three. All right, I need, to, I need them to add to give me negative five. So if they add to give negative and they multiply to give a positive, that means they both must be negative. And the only way to get that is negative two times negative three. So negative two and negative three, which is gonna make my answer, my factors, x minus two and x minus three. All right, and then again, you're gonna check. X times X, that's X squared. Negative two times negative three is positive six. This is negative two X, negative three X, which is going to give you the negative five X so you know your answer is correct. Okay, so now we're on to our next factoring type. Um, which is still trinomials, and I call this bottoms up. There are a handful of ways to actually solve this. I have just found that over the years in Algebra 1, this method seems to um, make the most sense, I guess, or just maybe be the simplest to kind of work through the simplest process and the quickest process for still being able to get the correct answer. Um, so remember that factoring is to unmultiply or undistribute. Um, and trinomials have three terms. You need to know that so that you recognize what type of factoring problem it is. Um, remember our multiplication review. So I'm going to distribute this 2x uh, both times. That's going to give me 8x squared minus 2x. Then I'm going to distribute the negative 3. That's going to give me negative 12x um, minus 3. And so then we're gonna just combine like terms. Remember that these will combine in the middle. So my final answer will be 8x squared here, minus 14x 
minus 3. Now, um, these questions are a little bit different than they were yesterday. Uh, so we're going to use the same pattern, but there's kind of a difference in how we deal with these. And the reason that there's a difference is because there's an 8 right here in the front. Like if I try to use my pattern from yesterday, which is um, they multiply to give me negative 3 and they're going to add to give me negative 14, that's never going to happen. I can't. I cannot ever pick two numbers that multiply to give me negative 3 and add to give me negative 14, which tells me, one, that I'm missing a step, but two, I need to deal with this. The other issue is that, remember yesterday, even if I could pick two numbers here, we would say this was like x plus something, x minus something. Well, I'm never going to be able to multiply x times x and get an 8x squared. That's, that's not going to work. So um, there's another process that we're going to use here, and we call it bottoms up for a reason. So we are going to use the bottoms up method when we have a trinomial. That means three terms. And the number in the front is not a GCF. So let me give you an example of when the number in the front is a GCF. Okay, so here I've got a GCF. And the reason I know that is because there's a number that I can take out of all three of those. I recognize that all of them have a 2 in them. So this is going back to that first type of factoring, 2. And then if I divide the 2 out, I'm thinking about if I was going to distribute that, right? That would create this. 2 x squared plus 7x plus 10. Now this on the inside is back to what we did yesterday, right? Um, 10 is my multiplying number, 7 is my adding number, so I'm going to set up my little puzzle here. Two numbers that multiply to give me 10, they add to give me 7. Um, those numbers are 5 and 2. And so my final answer here would be, this 2 is still a GCF, it's going to drop down. This part that I kind of got out is going to factor to be x plus 5 and x plus 2. And remember that I can check that by multiplying um, multiplying things back together, right? x times x is x squared times this 2 will give me 2x squared. 5 times 2 is 10 times this 2, because it's multiplying by everything, will give me the 20 that I had in the beginning. So that kind of checks itself there. So let me show you what it looks like if you don't have a GCF, because this is not bottoms up. This is GCF. For instance, this question does not have a GCF. And we're also not used to seeing this number in the front. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take this number, and I'm going to do that with it. All right, I am multiplying and moving. And remember, the number one rule in algebra, well, there's I guess there's kind of two of them. It's two variations, but what you whatever you do, you have to have like an equal component too. So you can't just multiply and move a number because you want to, all right? We're going to for a minute, but we're just remember, we can't just do that because we want to. So if I do that, that's going to make this back number negative 25. So my little table is going to say, I need two numbers that multiply to give me negative 25. They're going to add to give me 24. And if I think about that for a minute, those two numbers are going to be positive 20. Whoa my brain, positive 25 and negative 1. Okay, so normally you would write these factors x plus 25, x minus 1. Um, the problem is here, we've done something, we've multiplied and we've moved. So I need to deal with the fact that I've multiplied by this 5 out here. I multiplied by 5 and I've got to undo that. So I'm going to start by saying x plus 25, but I have to undo that multiplication, so I'm going to divide by 5. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. I know my number is negative 1, but I have to divide by 5 to undo that multiplication. And let me show you. I'm just going to highlight to show you like where I'm doing that. This 5 multiplied, and so I'm going to divide by 5 to fix that and to undo the fact that that's multiplied. Okay, so I've taken care of that part. So now I'm going to uh, simplify these to just make them look a little bit better. So I know like 25 divided by 5 is just 5 itself, so I can fix that one. Um, 1 over 5 doesn't simplify, so that just stays 1 over 5. If you try to make this your final answer, when you go to check it, 
x times x is not going to give you 5x squared that you had in the beginning. And 5 times negative 1 fifth is not going to give you negative 5. So we um, took care of the multiplication we did in the beginning. Now we need to take care of this moving. So that's one reason I like to draw this arrow, right? I multiplied this way. So I want to undo that multiplication. And I need to, no, sorry, not that multiplication. I need to undo the moving itself. So I moved this 5 to the end. So I need to undo that. So I'm going to take this 5 and move it back to the beginning. And remember, this is called bottoms up because I'm taking the number on the bottom and I'm moving it back up, which is going to make my final answer x plus 5, 5x five minus 1. All right, now you're going to do your quick little mental check here. x times 5x is 5x squared. That's what I had in the beginning. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And then if you want to check the middle, um, which you should, this is 25x, and that is negative 1x, which is going to give you the 24x in the middle. All right, I'm going to do two more of those examples just so you've got them. Okay, so remember, this 2 is not a GCF, so I can't divide it out, so I'm going to move that over. It's going to give me, I need two numbers that, not 3, I need two numbers that multiply to give me 6 now, and they're going to add to give me negative 5. Um, if I think about that, that's going to be negative 2 and negative 3. So when I write my factors, I'm going to do x minus 2 divided by 2, because I have to undo this multiplication I did in the beginning, x minus 3 divided by 2. So one more time, remember that this number is coming from the number that multiplied. All right, so if I can simplify that, I will. Uh, that's going to make this first factor uh, x minus 1. And the second factor is not going to simplify. And then I need to undo the moving part that I did in the beginning. So this number moved at the beginning, so I need to move it back. Um, I like to draw, again, I like to draw the arrows because I feel like it shows that it's going full circle. Um, like I feel like it shows that it's moving kind of back where it belonged. So let me fix that again. So my final answer, x minus 1, 2x minus 3. And then again, I'll do my quick little check here. Uh, multiply the first, that's 2x squared. Multiply the last is positive 3. Usually, um, if you can check those two things, chances are you're, you're right. You might still make a mistake in between, but if you check those and your signs work out, you're probably correct. All right, and then the last example. Okay, so this one we're going to multiply again because the 6 does not uh, factor out as a GCF. So I've got two numbers that are going to multiply to give me negative 30 and I need them to add to give me negative 13. Oh, I have a sign error on this one. Let's make this say positive 30. Okay, um, sorry, sometimes I do work questions too fast. So this is negative 10 and negative three. So when I set up my two factors, that's gonna give me x minus 10 divided by six x minus 3 divided by 6. So you're probably sick of hearing me say this, but I'll say it again. This 6 is coming from the one that you multiplied. All right, now this time, um, neither of them really divide perfectly, but I can reduce them both. So notice in this first one, 10 and 6 are both divisible by 2. So that's going to make this fraction x minus 5 over 3. In the next one, I can divide both of those numbers by 3, which will make this x minus 1 over 2. Now that I've simplified those, I'm going to move my numbers um, back to the beginning. And this is kind of, this is different than the other examples because now I have two numbers that need to move back to the beginning. All right, so when I do that, I'm going to end up with 3x minus 5. 2x minus 1. Now, again, to check that you've simplified and moved everything back correctly, you're going to multiply, just to, and this is just mental, you're doing this in your head. 
3x times 2x does give me the 6x squared in the beginning. Negative 5 times negative 1 does give me the positive 5 from the beginning. If you had forgotten to move them back, or if you had forgotten to simplify, when you do that check, your numbers won't match up, so you'll know that you've made a mistake somewhere. So always check. 